lipids are next. They are a large diverse group of organic compounds. Mostly they have carbon and hydrogen in them, they have very little oxygen. This makes them insoluble in water, making them hydrophobic. Phobic means fearing, which is in contrast to philic. In this context, we use the terms, terms as opposites, hydrophilic versus hydrophobic. A molecule is either water-loving or water-fearing, or separating out from water, is what that means. Since most of us is water, H2O, this describes an important quality of a molecule. Lipids separate out. Triglycerides are our neutral fats. They are fat deposits, they are insulation, that's a good energy source, or they're also building blocks for other lipid substances. Chemically, they have a glycerol backbone and three fatty acid chains coming off of them, making them like an E-shaped looking structure. Fatty acids are chains of carbons with hydrogens attached to them. They vary in length and in what type of covalent bonds the carbons are attached to one another. They are either mostly single or they have some doubles. Single bonds are nice and straight. They make saturated fats. Double bonds make kinks or bends in the chain. They create unsaturated fats or oils. The single bonds in the saturated fats, making them straight lines, those fatty acids, they can be packed very closely and that makes them solid at room temperature. These are our animal fats, like butter or lard. On the other hand, in unsaturated fats, the molecules cannot pack that closely because they have these kinks in them from the double bonds. They are liquid at room temperature. A good example of that is olive oil. Now let's get to trans fats. They originated as margarine and other baked goods, but are now in most processed foods. They are partially hydrogenated plant oils, making them solid at room temperature. Hydrogenated means we put more hydrogens onto the fatty acids. This removes the double bonds, making the fatty acid chains straighter, which then makes them behave like saturated fats more than oils. So, they become solid at room temperature, but we can call them they originate from vegetable oils. So we think that's not that bad. But don't be fooled. Both saturated and trans fats have been labeled as bad fats because they can cause cardiovascular disease. We now know that trans fats are the really bad ones and should be avoided at all costs. Saturated fats just need to be more balanced in most of our diets. Let's go a little deeper on that. Prostaglandins are chemicals that our cells make. They influence other cells' functions on a local level. So they are kind of like hormones, but they don't go into the bloodstream and get circulated through the whole body. They just act locally in the neighborhood. We have three basic families of them. They are derived from fatty acids. Prostaglandin families control many functions like blood clotting or blood pressure. They control inflammation, for example. Plant oils make prostaglandin family one. Red meats, dairy, as well as trans fats make the prostaglandin family two. And then cold weather oils and cold water fish make the prostaglandin family three. Prostaglandins, the families, need to be mostly balanced, but they are not in us. The ones in three we need more of because they decrease inflammation and blood pressure, for example. And the prostaglandin two family we need a little bit less of because they enhance inflammation, leading to many degenerative diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, but also autoimmune diseases. Trans fats are really diverse because they don't just lead to the buildup of prostaglandin 2, but they also inhibit the production of the prostaglandin 1 and the prostaglandin 3. They build up in the body and then they can create an environment for a disease with a sudden onset, like a heart attack. So be cautious with that. Limit your Cheetos. Alright, next we need to look at a fat that makes up our cell walls. 
A phospholipid is composed of a glycerol backbone with two fatty acid chains on one side and a phosphate containing molecule on the other side. This makes it both fatty-like as well as watery-like. The fatty acid gives is a non-polar or a hydrophobic end and the phosphate containing molecule gives it a polar or a hydrophilic end. This molecule is said to have polar heads and non-polar tails. This makes the phospholipid a great cell membrane because it sets up a boundary between the inside and the outside of a cell. Making two rows of phospholipids with the non-polar tails pointing at each other creates a little hydrophobic oil film on the inside. The hydrophilic polar head molecules are on the outside making it soluble in water as a whole structure. This oil film cannot be crossed by hydrophilic or water-loving molecules and so therefore we can set up a distinct inside to the outside of a cell. This cell membrane is also, or phospholipid bilayer, is also referred to as an elementary membrane. It is a very, very versatile structure in our body. The next and our final fat category is the, is the one of steroids. Steroids are flat molecules formed from four interlocking rings. Steroids are different from other fats, however, they are carbon and hydrogen, making them hydrophobic and soluble in fat, but not in water. Cholesterol is the most important steroid we have. It is the building block for many of the molecules like vitamin D, our sex hormones, or cortisol, or the hormone aldosterone, and we also find it in cell membranes. We measure blood cholesterol as those cholesterols can be associated with cardiovascular disease. The ones we measure are LDLs, and those are low-density lipoproteins. They carry fat molecules from the liver to the body, so we know them, therefore, as bad cholesterol. And then we have HDL, and that's known as the good cholesterol. Those are high-density lipoproteins, and they bring fat molecules from the body back to the liver for processing. So they're like vacuum cleaners picking up the fat in the body, so that makes them good. The balance of HDL and LDL is very important, and we measure that as the total cholesterol. Next are our proteins. 